Alright, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of options. So I'll start off talking about exactly what calls and puts are, then I'll talk about the other characteristics of options, and then finally, we'll calculate the option payoff and profit for both the long and the short positions. So what is an option? Well, an option is a security that gives the holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a quantity of an asset either on or before a given agreed upon date. Options are one of many different types of what we call derivatives, whose value is derived from another security's price. Uh, so we have, as derivatives, options, we have futures, we have swaps. All of these things are different types of derivatives. And derivatives, like options, are very, very powerful tools for hedging and speculation. All right, so what types of options exist? Well, there are two broad types of options. We have what are called call options, and we have what are put options. So a call option gives its holder the right to buy an asset at an agreed upon strike price, also known as an exercise price, on, or in some cases, before the expiration date. Now, uh, essentially, if you're an investor who buys this call option, you're going to want to exercise this option to buy the underlying asset if the market value of that underlying asset is greater than the strike price, aka the exercise price. So essentially you're using this option to buy an asset. The put option works the exact opposite. It gives you the right to sell an asset at the strike price on or before expiration. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how these call options work. Well, a call option, first thing you do when you want to buy a call option, you go out and you look at what the option premium is. Now that premium on the call option is essentially its price. It's the price that you pay to purchase the option to, that you want to exercise at a potentially later date. Uh, so the buyer is typically going to know, one, they're gonna know the strike price, so the price that they could exercise this option at. They're going to know the expiration date, the date when that option expires and becomes worthless. And they're also going to know the uh, transmission uh, method. So if they exercise this option, do they get cash or do they receive shares of the stock? Or in the case of some physical commodity, commodity options, do they actually receive physical goods? Now, if you own a call option, you bought a call option, uh, aka you're the long holder, uh, you would never want to exercise that call option if the strike price is less than the current asset price. And one thing I should also say is that these uh, both puts and calls, they do trade in the open market, many of them. Okay, so let's talk about the profit and the payoff of a call option. So our profit function is exactly what you see on the screen. It's essentially our underlying stock price, we're assuming this is a call option on some stock, uh, minus the strike price, we use the letter K, just like in baseball, and then we subtract the cost of the option. And usually the, the majority of the cost of the option is the premium itself. So S minus K minus premium. Uh, so that's that. All right, so let's take a look at the profit structure of a long call option. So in this example, I have a long call option that has a $5 premium or price and a strike price of $35. So this is the uh, exercise price. Now, if you took the long position on this call option, you're betting that the underlying asset, in this case, a stock, is going to have a stock price above $35. Let's start off with the case where it doesn't though. If the underlying stock price is $25, you would never want to exercise this call option because you're exercising it at $35, meaning you pay $35 for something that's currently worth $25. So essentially what I'm trying to get at here is if the stock price is below the strike price, you don't exercise this call option. It'd be stupid to do it. Uh, so your, pay, your profit here is really just the cost of the option. It's negative $5. Uh, now, this means that you are, as we say, out of the money here. At $35, you are at the money. If we go above $35, 
that's when the stock price is above the strike price and we say that you are uh, in the money. And this is where we really want to be. This is why we purchase long haul options because the underlying stock price could be above the actual strike price. Okay, so I just mentioned the term in the money and at the money. What are these terms? Well, these terms tell us whether or not this option is paying off. So when I say in the money with respect to a call option, it means that the underlying asset value is greater than the strike price. In other words, in the case of a, a stock, the stock price on the underlying asset is greater than the strike price. So you'd want to exercise. In the case of a put, it's the exact opposite. When I say that something's out of the money, you would never want to exercise that option. In the case of a call option, it means that your asset price or stock price is less than your strike price. And for a put option, it's the exact opposite. And when I say at the money, well, that's the case where the, the strike price and the, the asset price are equal. So uh, in this case, it'd technically be right here. Okay, now there are two tr sides to any trade. We have the long position, which I just described. That's where you buy the call option. But you can also have the trader who created and sold the option. When they sell that option, they are the short position on that options contract. And this is their payoff structure. Uh, if they sell that option, they get the premium. So if the premium is $5 and they sell that to someone else, they get a $5 premium. However, if, let's say, the underlying stock price rises above $35, then they could potentially lose an unlimited amount of money because as the price un increases above 35, you know, their, their loss is essentially unbounded. Uh, so, you know, yeah. Okay, so that's that. That's call options. A put option gives its holder the right to sell an asset at the strike price on or before the expiration date. And you would generally want to buy a put option if you expected the market price of the underlying asset to be below the strike price. So, what is our profit structure here? Well, it's kind of the opposite of what we just saw for the call option. Our profit structure for a put option is strike price minus underlying stock price or asset price minus any cost of the option, aka mostly the premium. So here is our profit structure if we take the long position on a put. In other words, we bought a put. Uh, so we buy the put for $5. So if this put doesn't get exercised, we lose the value of the premium that we paid, so that $5. However, if the underlying stock price falls below our strike price, that's where we start to profit. Because you know, as the stock price gets lower and lower, potentially, K minus the underlying stock price increases and increases. Uh, ultimately, this is bounded by, you know, O, oh, the strike price minus the minus zero, essentially. Uh, but yeah, the lower the underlying stock price, the greater the profit on a long put option. On the short side of the put option, we get the exact opposite. Basically, you sell this put, so you get the $5 premium, and then if the underlying value of the stock falls, you are on the hook for, well, whatever the difference is between the strike price and the underlying stock price. Uh, what this means is that you have to buy the underlying stock for the strike price, even though the, the actual stock price is well below the strike price. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. In August of 2018, you believed that the price of a share of Apple stock would rise. You purchased a call option on Apple with an exercise price, or K, of 102 and an expiration date of 12-16-2018. Apple shares were trading at $100 and the premium was $225. Should you exercise the call option right now? Well, we know our exercise price, or strike price, is 102 we know the underlying stock price is 100. We know our option cost is 225. This is our premium. Uh, our profit is actually it's going to be negative. So ultimately, uh, it's just our, our stock price minus strike price minus the premium that gives us a profit of 425. Uh, in this case, we would not want to exercise the option. Uh, now, suppose you sell 
this option for 110 on the expiration date. In that case, your payoff is going to be the stock price minus the exercise price. Uh, so it's going to be 110 minus 102. So in this case, your payoff is $8, and your profit is really just the uh, stock price minus the exercise price. It should be minus the premium. Uh, so that's the, this amount right here. And our call option profit should be 525. So uh, it, essentially what I'm trying to get at here is if the call option price or the underlying price of the stock rises, we are going to be in the money here. Okay, now let's take a look at another case. Let's assume that instead of buying a call option, you purchased a put option with an exercise price of 102. The put option costs 25 cents and the share price has fallen to $90. What are your payoff and profit? Well, in this case, your payoff is just the difference between the price, the exercise price, and the stock price. Your put option payoff is therefore 102 minus 90, uh, so $12. So in this case, uh, you, you would have a positive payoff. Your profit is just essentially your payoff minus the premium. So in this case, it's 102 minus 90 minus 25 cents. So our put option payoff per option is 11.75. Uh, so you are in the money in this case because the underlying stock price is well below the strike price. Okay, so let's summarize. Call options and put options can be used to profit on changes in the price of the underlying asset. It doesn't necessarily have to be stocks, but usually those are the assets that are easiest to think of. We can have two positions for calls and puts. We can have the long position where you buy the call, and you can have the short position where you sell the call. Long calls benefit as the underlying price rises, and short calls benefit as the underlying price falls or stays below the strike price. Long puts benefit when the underlying price falls because you can sell your asset for the strike price instead of the lower stock price. Uh, ultimately, though, uh, long and short positions have the opposite profit structures. So with that, I'm going to conclude, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.